I'm always on the lookout for locations and methods for creating new models for my work. And I do a lot of organic modeling. And so when I heard about meshy.ai, I thought, well, let's give this a try and see if we can actually generate some of the models that I'm looking for for the projects I'm working on. I've been playing around with some of the other AI tools out there, ChatGPT and some of the image generators like Digital Dolly. But when I saw that there was an option to create these for 3D, I got really excited because uh, 3D model generation, if you've ever done it, is uh, really time consuming. So if there's a way I can at least make a starting point to get me where I want to go with my project, then this could be a really valuable tool even if it's just used for something like blocking in for concepts. So I thought it'd be nice for us to kind of walk through this together. So let's dive in and check it out. So here we are in Meshi. I've gone ahead and created an, an account and it gives me 200 credits uh, and it has uh, a bunch of examples of models that other people have created that you can scroll through. Um, I'm working on a project right now that's got a lot of ocean creatures and things like that. And I see a, 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 an octopus in here that looks pretty good. Um, but I thought I would try to challenge the software a little bit more. It seems to be really good at sort of like common things, um, but I'm going to try to do a couple of different things. So I'm going to generate like a coral reef and some jellyfish and things like that. So let's go ahead and jump into the text to 3D uh, area and I'm going to create a new prompt. So I'm going to say coral reef with lots of colorful coral, sea anemones, sea fawns, sea stars, starfish, and plants. So I'm going to use that as my main prompt. I'm also going to add comma high resolution, high quality in there. And for an, it gives you the option to do a negative prompt. So I think I'm going to say, um, this, this, these are things you don't want to have happen in your model. So I don't want any fish, crabs, swimming creatures, or anything of that nature. So hopefully that'll limit that. And I'm going to go ahead and let it stay on auto for the art style. I'm tempted to click realistic, but I'm going to leave it on auto and see what happens. So this fixed seed is an option there where if you wanted to create something that, uh, with this, uh, the same random tone every time, it'll generate the same result. So I'm going to leave it on random. So it's using a different random seed generator every time. And I'm going to hit generate. So it takes a little bit of time, but while it's doing its thing to give it uh, a, a first view, uh, let's just kind of look around at what our other options are. So we've got some viewing tools over here. We've got some display settings, texture settings, environment settings. So it gives you options that you can use to sort of change the way you're viewing what you view once you generate it. So that's nice. So interesting. This is uh, our first, first coral reef generator. And I just want to spend some time looking at each one of these. So it generates four models for you and you can choose from which ones you want to work with further. It gives you sort of a rough texture idea. Uh, you can look at the model um, mesh as well and you can turn the texture off altogether if you just wanted to look at the mesh alone. So this is the mesh it generated, kind of a bit of a blob. Let's try this out. This one looks a little bit better. Um, so I see some sort of like sea anemone looking creature up there or shape, coral-like shape. This one from the smaller preview looks pretty good. Um, it's got, I'm going to turn off the mesh for a little bit. It's got quite a lot going on in there. It's a fair amount of detail, as does this one. I think it has a fair amount of detail. Obviously, these models, like right off the bat, are not going to be useful for a lot in terms of like downloading them directly and using them in a project. But... I think, you know, they might be good for blocking something in. I want to go ahead and try the refine um, tool on here and see if I can get it to look even better. See what kind of texture model uh, map it's going to create for me. So it costs 20 um, credits to refine something. And you can change your level of refinement from none to low to high to medium. And 
It doesn't change the coin value, so I'm going to keep that at high and hit refine. And as soon as this is done, um, we'll pick back up and I'll, I'll show you the result. So it just finished, and on first glance, uh, it looks pretty impressive. Um, let's see how we feel about it once we zoom in a little. So the zoom tools are pretty standard. Uh, I mean, that's that's not bad. I mean, the, the mesh itself is still not amazing, but it's done a pretty nice job of actually creating a texture that's, you know, something that's useful. Like if that was in the background of a, of a piece of art or something like that, let's say like this point of view, I could see this actually being something you could use. Uh, for the case of, of what I'm trying to work on for my own project, I don't think it's going to work out for me, but um, let's, I'm not going to download this one. The downloads actually cost you more credits, right? So you can download the um, project and if you download it, you, it shows you that it's going to be, after you click on it, it's going to be a 20 credit uh, cost to download it. But I am going to just move on past this one and create something else I think. I can come back and download it later on if I want to. So let's try a different one. We can just come in here and delete all of this and I'm gonna say I'm gonna try just doing a C anemone. So uh, C anemone. This is a weird creature so uh, I don't know if it's gonna do a very good job. C anemone with tentacles fully extended, many tentacles, on high quality, high resolution, realistic, large. We'll see what, see what that does for us. I'm not gonna do any, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this one on realistic and um, See what happens. Right, so here is our first uh, collection of C anemone models. Let's take a closer look at each one of these. <laughs> Off the bat, none of them actually look like C anemones to me. They look like little party hats or something. Um, but I don't think these are going to be too valuable. That one definitely not. This one's kind of interesting. I mean, it's got something going on out there at least. And this one, maybe, I want to texture one of these and refine the textures, but let us see. I think just for fun, I'm going to grab this first one. I am kind of dig on this sort of party hat look now. Uh, and let's go ahead and refine this one. Okay, so it's finished its refinement. Let's take a look. So we've gone from what we saw previously in this version to uh, the refined version. And I mean, this doesn't look anything like an actual sea anemone, but I've got to say, I kind of love what it created. Uh, the textures are fun, and I think I could actually use this for something a little whimsical, especially in the background. Uh, for my own personal work, I'm trying to create things that are, you know, based on sea creatures, but not exactly the sea creatures themselves and I might actually use this so uh, I'm gonna see, see what kinds of manipulations I can do to it here um, you can see it gives the gives you the option to see the 3d view plus the texture map that it created so it's kind of like an exploded atlas sort of uh, map uh, let's look at the texture map so it is actually pretty high resolution in terms of a texture map and uh, there's a new option here in this version that you can change your uh, mesh settings to quad. It doesn't charge you any credits to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'll download this and uh, see if I can use it in a project eventually. Excellent, so let's go ahead and download this. Um, once you do the quad uh, change, it only gives you the option to download an OBJ file, which is totally fine. 
And then here's where it charges you to 20 credits to download it. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes to that. So you can see it's downloaded a zip file uh, with the OBJ in there. So I'll take a look at that a little bit later on. I want to keep playing around and make some more things. So um, I'm going to I'm going to leave that high quality, high resolution, realistic, large portion in there. And I'm going to say uh, this time I'm going to work towards making a jellyfish and see what happens. So jellyfish with long flowing tentacles. And a large bell shaped body. Cool. So, jellyfish with long flowing tentacles and a large bell shaped body. Um, I'm going to say with many long flowing tentacles and a large bell shaped body. That'll be our prompt for this one, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Generate. And this is fairly impressive. I mean, these actually look like jellyfish. This one is a little odd. It's got sort of like a rhinoceros tentacle. But look at this one. I mean, that's very realistic. I mean, the tentacles are different lengths. It doesn't feel perfect, but it feels like it has a, a nice shape to it, as does this one. It's got that central tentacle to it uh, with the others around the outside. And I, I kind of dig this one as well. I think the model itself is a little bit uh, strange. If I were to actually be doing something about jellyfish, I think I would uh, download all of these with the exception of maybe the first one. But I am going to pick one of these, and I'm going to go ahead and let it refine this model and download it as well. And I think I'm going to pick this one just because I like that central grouping of tentacles as well as the ones around the outside. And so I'm going to say refine on this one. Okay, so it's got its refined texture generation done. So now we're going from this to this. Uh, so obviously some very strange things going on here. It's almost like it's got an extra mouth embedded in there. Um, but I do dig the model. I think that I will actually use this model for some sort of background concept art. I'm noticing one of these tentacles is floating, uh, and I didn't notice that previously. It is not floating. So it actually did manipulate the model a little bit uh, and change that, which is not cool. I might come back here and try one of these others, maybe this one. And I'm going to change the refinements down to medium on this one and refine it. Okay, so this one has finished, and let's take a look at what it's done. Much, I mean, so far, much more successful. Like, this actually is beautiful. Uh, I think it's got some really nice things going on here. It's not perfect, again, but it's it's pretty good. It's even got a mouth at the bottom, uh, central. Uh, it's got some weird stuff going on on top. I don't know what that's about. But these aren't, these are things that wouldn't be too hard to uh, fix. Like, actually look at where those are. That would be easy to touch up in Photoshop. And uh, yeah, I, I dig this. I like this a lot. I'm actually going to download this one as well. I think I'll go ahead and do the uh, quad mesh again and apply that. And then I'll download these, or at least download this one. OK, so we've got this nicer model. It's missing a tentacle. Did you see that? Okay, so for some reason, the uh, the quad mesh actually destroyed the model a little bit. So I'm going to keep it uh, where it was. And in this case, uh, if you don't do the quad mesh, you get more options in terms of what you can download. So I'm just going to go ahead and download the FBX file and pay the 20 credits out of my stash here. 
And when I'm done making a few models, I'll go ahead and open these all up in Cinema 4D and we can explore them together. Next, I think I want to go move towards something a little bit less um, challenging. Uh, so I'm gonna, I saw that there was a really nice octopus out there, but I'm, I kind of want to test it myself and just do an octopus. And so I'm going to say an octopus. And at the end here, I'm going to say, rather than large, I'm going to say ready for rigging. See what that does. Hopefully that gives us something that's a little bit more symmetrical. Um, I might actually put symmetrical in here too. So the more descriptive you can be in your prompts, I feel like the better it's going to do. And there are uh, guidelines in here you can look at if you want more information about these. But let's try this on an octopus with long tentacles, high quality, high resolution, realistic, ready for rigging, symmetrical. So that's pretty nice. It's got some weird sort of joining here in that one arm. This one also has some weird joining in that arm and only six, six arms. This one has a lot of arms and some weirdness going on. So really, none of these uh, actually worked out. Uh, let's say an octopus with eight long tentacles, high quality resolution. I might get rid of the symmetrical part and just say ready for rigging and see what happens and uh, generate that. So it's nice that each of the generate features only cost you five credits to generate the first version. And then you can kind of decide which ones you wanna work with from there. So here's our next, next version. Let's see what these look like. It may be that none of these are gonna work out uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a seven armed octopus with some additional little spiky appendages. Well, this one actually looks pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're not ex probably exactly arranged as they should be, but th that's not bad. And let's see about this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It has eight tentacles, but some of them are a little bit wonky. Mm -hmm. So out of these choices, I'm going to say I have to go with this one, and I just want to see what it does with the refined texture. I love, I love the color of this blue one. I wish that, and I actually love the shape of it. So I wish that it was better in terms of the tentacle quality, but. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Eight. This is a this is a, a dodecapus, I guess. I don't know. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and go with this one and say refine, and I'm gonna change my settings to be medium as well on this one and say refine. So it's done with its preview, uh, and that's uh, so far pretty. <laughs> this one's got a little bit of an extra growth around his one eye here, uh, but you know, I feel like I could take this into like maybe cinema and mirror it, uh, do a symmetry mirror to to the model, and maybe get something worthwhile out of uh, even just rendering from this angle. You might be able to use it for like a blocking sort of thing. I love some of the textures and the appearance it's got in certain spaces. I, I think I'm going to go ahead and download this one as well as an FBX. So now I'm down to 15 credits uh, for my day. So you can see your 200 free credits go by pretty quickly. Uh, you can add more if you want to pay for them. 
but your free credits, you get 200 a month. And so if this is something you really wanted to work on quite a lot, you might uh, need to go ahead and pay for credits or uh, sign up for a paid account. Let's try one more thing. I'm going to say, let's do something that feels like it should be able to do it really well. Uh, I'm going to say blue whale. I'm just going to keep it at that. Very simple. A blue whale, high quality, high resolution, realistic, ready for rigging. I'm not going to be able to download this one or refine it because I don't have enough credits. But they do give you options like uh, you can share with people. And if you share this on your social media, it'll give you 50 credits. So they have little, little uh, sort of prompts to help you gain new credits if you want to. I just want to kind of get a sense for the quality of the models that it's making. So it does seem like uh, something that's more common, like a blue whale or, you know, a shark or something like that. It is going to give us better, more reliable, consistent uh, models. Some of these look really, really good. The lighting's nice. Some of it's a little strange. I think maybe this first one's probably the most successful. But hopefully that gives you a, a nice rundown of kind of the different types of things. I wanted to really see what it could do for sea creatures. And uh, as opposed to other things that I've seen on here, like, you know, characters and things like that. And I got to say, I'm pretty impressed with what it's able to do. Um, let's go back and just take a couple, a look at a couple of other, other things here. Um, oh. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this survey. So because I filled this survey out, uh, I got actually another 200 credits added to my account. So I'm going to go ahead and download my octopus. Or actually, I'm going to go ahead and refine my whale and see what happens. So uh, we'll refine this one. Here's our refined blue whale. And uh, that is pretty impressive. It's a, it's a nice texture. Can't really see that it has any eyes. I think its eyes are misplaced or it doesn't have any. They should be about right there. So some issues. I love the skin texture on there. Uh, so some definite positives. I think this could be something you could work with. The bottom is completely <laughs> foobarred. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, but I mean, all in all, for like a going from a tiny block of text to a model, I think it's a pr pretty good job. Um, I also wanted to kind of just like pick around and see what kinds of things we can explore in here. It's like, what happens if we want to get credits? Okay, so you can actually just purchase extra credits and. So for $4, you can get an additional 200 credits, but you have to be a subscriber. You can't do it on the free plan. So it looks like the only way you can get more credits is to do survey or, you know, share your stuff. Otherwise, you only get 200 a month. And then you have to sign up for a pro account, which is $16 a month. So I think that right now this is a tool that's you know, fun to play with. Uh, I think it gives me some interesting results. Uh, it's not currently, I think, at a stage where I'm going to be able to use it in my work regularly, but I'll definitely continue playing with it, and I'm very excited to see where it goes in the future. So I think I'll, I'll go ahead and download my Blue Whale, even though it's not a perfect model, uh, just for fun. And I'm going to put a few of these in a Cinema 4D scene and see what I can get out of it. And what I will do is merge each of these into this project. So I'll say
that's how this model comes in. And once it's got the, uh, you know, Fong tag on there and it's kind of smoothed out a little bit, it's actually, uh, it's actually fairly impressive. So this is a Redshift render engine uh, with that octopus just brought straight into the scene. Uh, let's go ahead and merge the rest of these in here and see what we can do. So merge, we'll grab our blue whale. So I brought in our squid and our octopus um, into Cinema 4D, and I just put in a quick dome light. I put in a couple of uh, other lights in here as well, uh, just to get a sense for how these are looking and scaled them up a little, change the scales a little bit. Um, so I think they're pretty pretty good. I mean, I, I'm uh, relatively impressed with. If I were doing this as a piece of concept art and I just needed to kind of get the point across, I could easily easily frame something with this and, you know, I'm going to kill this one. Uh, I could easily frame something with these creatures uh, uh, and do some concept work and Photoshop work on top of that and get something that's fairly impressive. Uh, I'm going to do a quick render here at... Uh, full HD size and see what we get. So here is the the render from the models straight out of, I didn't do anything to them, I just put some simple lighting on there. And there are some issues, but uh, they're actually pretty decent models. Uh, for just typing something in uh, based on a text prompt. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, preview of Meshi 3D with me. Uh, I think you can see that it's a tool that's going to be really helpful. Uh, I think it has some really helpful properties now. And I mean, we've seen AI technology changing so much just in terms of like a year, if you think about what ChatGPT was capable of a year ago and what a lot of the uh, image generators were capable of only a year ago. And I'm really, really excited to see where this one goes in the next year, because I think it'll be something that uh, a lot of us are going to be able to use right inside of our workflow. So thanks, and I'll see you uh, in another video.